Iliotibial band syndrome is a common overuse injury causing pain at the outside of the knee. It is typically seen in runners and cyclists. The iliotibial band, or ITB, is a fibrous band that runs longitudinally along the lateral aspects of the thigh, from its origin at the iliac crest to the proximal tibia. The ITB is formed proximally at the hip by the fascia of the gluteus maximus, gluteus medius, tensor fascia latae, and vastus lateralis muscle. The ITB has many attachments distally, and these include the quadriceps patella patella tendon complex, the lateral femoral epicondyle, LFE, and the biceps femoris muscle tendon fibula complex. Distally again, the ITB actually courses over the lateral femoral epicondyle before inserting at Gerdes tubercle at the anterolateral tibia, just below the knee joint line. The ITB is thought to assist with knee extension when the knee is near terminal extension and with knee flexion once the knee is flexed beyond 30 degrees. The ITB also provides lateral knee stability. The mechanism of injury. Iliotibial band syndrome occurs from overuse, not acute trauma. The exact mechanism, however, of the pain is unclear. Previously, pain was thought to be due to friction from the iliotibial band moving back and forth over the lateral femoral epicondyle during activities such as running or cycling. Risk factors for ITB include sudden increase in running or cycling distance, high weekly running mileage, excessively long strides causing increased hip flexion and increased strain at the lateral knee, incorrect pedal position when cycling, exercising during cold weather, and anatomical and biochemical factors, including weak hip abductors leading to increased hip adduction, knocked knees, and increased internal rotation at the knee, thought to cause strain at the ITB. Also increased hip abduction, genu varum, or bow legs, with increased ankle supination, are thought to develop increased tension of the ITB at the lateral femoral epicondyle. Clinical presentation of iliotibial band syndrome is sudden onset of pain, localized really where the iliotibial band courses over the lateral femoral epicondyle. Initially, the pain occurs during sports, described as sharp or burning when the knee is slightly bent, or when the knee extends during cycling or during foot strike when running. Pain may become constant and deep. On examination, there is focal tenderness at the distal iliotibial band where it courses over the lateral femoral epicondyle. You also get what's called a positive noble compression test. To perform this test, the examiner's thumb is placed with moderate pressure on the posterior border of the iliotibial band close to the lateral femoral epicondyle with the patient's hip slightly flexed. The examiner then passively flexes the patient's knee. The test is positive when pain is reproduced where the thumb is placed. Pain is more pronounced at approximately 30 degrees. The diagnosis of iliotibial band syndrome is based on history and clinical examination. However, Investigations that could be ordered include an ultrasound, 
which may show thickening of the iliotibial band at the lateral epicondyle, an x-ray, and an MRI, only if the diagnosis is unclear. Treatment of iliotibial band syndrome in the acute setting is rest and avoid activities that worsens the pain using ice, analgesia such as ibuprofen, and then eventually gradually rehabilitation with stretches and strengthening exercises. People should also slowly return to their sports or regular activities less than 50% of normal capacity. In the chronic phase, when these acute treatments do not work, glucocorticoid injections may be used. Surgical release of the iliotibial band is also an option for complicated cases. So in summary, this video discussed iliotibial band syndrome which is where you have pain over the iliotibial band as it passes over the lateral femoral epicondyle. Positive noble compression test is a useful clinical examination to diagnose iliotibial band syndrome. Thank you for watching.